Hey and what's up guys, my name is Yuris and welcome to another video here on my YouTube channel. Feels very good to be back guys. In today's video we're escaping not one, not two of these tiny little terrariums, but we're escaping 50, yes, five, zero. And why I need so many of them? What do you guys think? Drop a comment down below and make sure to stick till the very end of this video. And this is when I'm going to reveal what I need or why I need 50 of these terrariums. Now, without any further ado, let's get started. And before I start, uh, a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video. This is Tropica, who has provided the beautiful plants and also uh, European Aquaristics, who has provided the substrate for those little tiny terrariums. Okay, now the disclaimer is out, guys. We are starting. What I have here are tiny cylindrical terrariums. Uh, those are the trials I did before. Uh, we have a slightly larger one. Today I'm going to skip 50 of the smaller version. Uh, the original idea for this came from the and ADA and meanwhile available as Dua, I think Maro glass, they are called just basically tiny little glass terrariums. And this one here is acrylic. Um, definitely doesn't break that easily and also it's more affordable and I need 50 of them. And where do I get 50 tiny little acrylic uh, this cylinders like this? I found them at Muji, that Japanese uh, shop, that brand. And yeah, I ordered online 50 uh, of them and they haven't had this many in stock. So I actually had to wait quite for a long time to get them delivered. I got them here and before we get started, uh, I have to do a little of uh, unboxing. So I have a few spare pieces over here here. You know, this is what they look like uh, when they come delivered. Let me put the finished ones aside and uh, yeah, do some unboxing. I think there are always 12 units in each and every one. And uh, yeah, I have to unbox many of them. Ooh, there you go. Plenty of the tiny little terrariums. So let's get them all out, put them on the table before we get started. Okay, the containers are ready. Now let's get to the other parts, other ingredients that I will need for this project. Somehow... <laughs> I had no idea this would work like this. Perfect. <laughs> okay, great guys. Um, as for the substrate, I'm going to use the Doa Tropical River Soil. Uh, this is equally suitable for aquariums as well as for paludariums and or terrariums. And as you can see, one of these tiny little containers is more a terrarium or paludarium, I would say, uh, because I'm not going to fill them up with water. Uh, just makes things so much easier, but you can still enjoy your aquatic plants inside. And since I haven't talked about them in the beginning, uh, these tiny containers, they have Micrantimum Monte Carlo or Micrantimum tweedii, which is the new scientific name, by the way, um, as a carpeting plant, and then a tiny Bucifolandra species red in the middle, in that one. And the slightly, slightly larger one features a Bucifalandra and a Cryptocorini Petchy Eye. I trimmed off the leaves, nonetheless, they're growing quite large and would require more frequent trimming. That's why I've chosen a different crypt species for the new containers. And they're just beautiful, tiny little terrariums and you can enjoy your plants inside. So, like I said, Dua Tropical River Sand, thanks to European Aquaristics for providing these. And for, oh, smooth, uh, to easily fill in this stuff into the containers using a little plastic jar over here. Let's put this aside for a second. Okay, so we got the substrate. What do I teach you guys always? Preparation is king, right? So let's get prepared first before we get started. This means uh, we need the plants. So here we got them. Fresh delivery from Tropica. Love the quality, by the way. Once again, thanks Tropica for providing the plants for this video. So we have here the brand new brown pots. This is a new addition. All the Tropica plants are now produced in brown pots. They're called eco pots. Uh, 
recycled plastic, yes, but also the brown color is better recognized by the recycling uh, facilities. So the recycling rate is higher on the brown plastic uh, compared to other colors. So yeah, it's good, environmentally friendly. Um, and yeah, this is the potted version and I wanted the potted version because I'm going to apply the lazy dry stud method to get the carpeting plants in. Uh, I'm not going to plant them with tweezers. If you don't know how this technique is uh, working, just check out one of my previous videos. And uh, yeah, there I will explain this. And here we have, let me actually move the tray apart. Arrgh! Here we have a Cryptocorani albida brown. Cryptocorani albida brown, and this is a small Cryptocorani species. And you can see here, it goes in a lot better than the Cryptocorani patchy eye. And I think I'm going to, yeah, clean them off all sort of off camera. Um, so you've seen two plant species. We have one more. Over here, we have the Bootsy Phalandra species red. Yeah, love this Bootsy Phalandra. Uh, sustainably produced in Denmark from tissue culture material. No wild collected Bootsy Phalandras. Folks, this is important for me. Don't buy this wild collected Bootsy Phalandras. Uh, always try to go for something that is produced uh, sustainably. Here we have the plants. Now I have to prepare them, get rid of the rock wool before we can get started. Okay, let's move on with this. So next step is to fill in some substrate material. For that reason, I'm going to use one of the old containers I have here and a new one and kind of see how much I need. So this is like two, two fingers white. I don't know how many inch that is. Uh, if you know the measurement, drop a comment below uh, so we get used to this common terms. And yeah, here I have the tropical river soil from Doha and uh, yeah, I have to fill it in. But guys, I need one sort of a measuring spoon. I think that is a good idea. This way we also know exactly how much substrate goes into each one. And here we have a, a 50 milliliter spoon. Let's take one of these and see if this is enough inside. If we compare them, Oops, side by side, a little bit too little. If I do two spoons, that could be a little bit too much. Can I make it work with just one spoon? I'm not too happy. I want it precise. So if I do approximately one and a half spoons, we get this amount. One full spoon, one half spoon. Let's do this. Okay, now I have them all here on that wooden plate and let's put one spoon in each of them and then half a spoon again. okay uh, sort of very equal amount uh, in every little container I don't know a little jar like this you know what could it be a panna cotta or a little tiramisu maybe <laughs> that is funny so now that we got the substrate in place next step is coming up and uh, which is uh, adding a little bit of a hardscape inside okay for the hardscape I have over here a little uh, a little box full of mini landscape rocks so I'm just looking for small pieces like this one approximately like my little finger and uh, what I'm gonna do is just shake the substrate a little bit and put in the tiny little rock 
and hopefully I have enough small rocks for this project. Enough of the hardscape for the moment, now let's get to the plants. And my idea is to use one crypt, one Bootsy Falandra, like 50%, 50, 50. So we have three rows in the front with the, uh, let me turn this around, ah, like this. So we have three rows uh, with the crypt and three rows with the Bootsy Falandra. So let's start with the Bootsy Falandra first. How many I have here? 10. And I have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 18, 19, 20. If I have 10, I divide them by 2, so making two portions out of each cup. Simple. Okay. Always divide the Putsifalandra from the roots. And now let's squeeze it in. Close to the rock, so we leave a little bit of space on the outside for the Micrantimum tweedii, Monte Carlo. And uh, yeah, this is a little bit of a process here to get them all prepared, but this is for a good reason. And I'm really curious, guys, I'm not stressing out by any means. You, you, you don't have to if you don't want, but really curious to read in the comments what you think uh, is the reason I'm doing all these little tiny terrariums. So no pressure, drop a comment below, let me know. Also check out what everyone else has commented. Uh, sometimes it's just just so much fun reading your comments, guys. Uh, I don't reply to each and every comment. Uh, it just takes too much time. I would rather create a new piece of uh, content than spending too much time replying back. But, you know, I read them all. I go through all the comments and I try to reply to as many as I can. And there is sometimes really, really interesting conversations going on between you guys. So always appreciate those who are sharing their wisdom with the community members. guys, all the Bootsy Falanda and the Cryptocorini are in place and uh, yeah, because I'm a little bit worried that the plants will dry out, it quite takes a little bit of time, I'm um, going to give them a quick spray before I add the Monte Carlo. By the way guys, this sprayer is so fancy, love it a lot. You push once and it keeps spraying for literally a few seconds. Uh, I think this is for hairdressers or something. Uh, found that on Amazon, you will find links down in the description. Uh, not only for the bottle, but for everything. All the plants, the little containers, everything I use in this video, you will find links down in the description. So check out that section. So now I'm moving on to the Monte Carlo Tweedy Eye. Uh, have it here. Let's get this out. Uh, so what I do here, I'm taking this Monte Carlo pads. I take my tweezers, uh, scissors I mean, of course, and I just cut it down in one or two centimeter 
small pieces. So we have here like, you know, like, like fresh cut herbs or something like that, that you would put on a, on a dish. And I think I would just do that with uh, two pots. That could be already enough because yeah, I don't really have too much substrate inside this container is now that the main plant and the piece of hardscape is there. And if you haven't seen one of my lazy dry start videos, the UNS 5N Evagumi was such a dry start and the 45P tank over there in the corner, you can see a little sneak peek, it's completely overgrown. I have to trim the Monte Carlo. It works like magic, I promise, guys. Uh, and the beauty is you can take a fresh plant, you can, like from a pot, you can take a tissue culture plant, or you can just uh, cut your existing aquarium, scoop out the trimmings and use them as like seedlings for new projects. So let me take a little bit and uh, yeah, literally, Put a little bit inside every container here. I wish I could do like this. Actually, I can do like this. So we get a little bit inside every container. This is like, it's like using seeds, but don't buy seeds on the internet for our aquarium plants. They are usually fake. So I tried several, colleagues of mine have tried several. Uh, everything you can buy on, I don't know, Amazon, Alibaba, everywhere that kind of promises to be Hemiandros Kubler or Glossostigma seeds or whatever is fake. Uh, they are usually stem plants. Sometimes they are terrestrial plants. Uh, if you're lucky, you get uh, Hygrophila species or Lobelia species, they are stem plants, uh, because they're also used for seed propagation of those plants in the nurseries. And there are no seeds from carpeting plants available commercially. Uh, the reason for that is carpeting plants are growing so quickly and it is so difficult to collect uh, their seeds. It's just not economical and something that doesn't make sense for the industry Come on guys, it will not make sense to sell those seeds uh, on the internet. Um, I wish I could say the job is done, but unfortunately not. Now I have to take the tweezers and just help the Monte Carlo uh, fall down on the substrate. Now I need a little bit of more water inside those individual containers to do so. I think I'm gonna use my bottle I use for the workouts. So let's fill in some water and give them a little Et voila, we have enough water in each container. Can you hear the sound? I guess that's the dry soil soaking up uh, the moisture. And what you want, you want the soil, as you can see here, to be wet, but you don't want the water to be, I don't know, like collected at the bottom. This will be too much. And uh, now the only thing is to do to kind of clean everything from the outside and seal them with those uh, glass lids. And there is one more thing, uh, whoops, uh, that I like to do with the immerse setups. As you know from my numerous videos on immerse setups, by the way, check out the playlist up here. Um, I like to add springtails. Uh, I have some springtails in here, the tiny little creatures, they help to maintain, uh, you know, everything healthy and clean. It's like the cleanup crew. You have your shrimps and snails uh, in your aquariums and the springtails, they are the cleanup crew. Uh, for this tiny little build. So I'm going to add a few springtails in every little tiny terrarium and they are going to guarantee that if there is something, some mold or fungus, they're going to clean up and eat that. Uh, so we have a tiny little cleanup 
colony in each and every one. Uh, super cool, it's like an entire ecosystem. If I look closely inside in here, uh, in that one, I can see some springtails running around uh, and they breed, so they're different size. So they live inside. And uh, all you have to do to make uh, to take care of this one is provide it some light. Uh, I don't know, you can use a fancy desktop light or uh, put it just uh, on your window seal if you have enough daylight and just every once in a while, uh, especially in the beginning, just, just checking if things dry out or if they are uh, okay and give them a tiny little spray like this one. That's it, that's enough, once per day. Uh, just to keep things wet, avoid water to uh, collecting at the bottom. And guys, uh, yeah, this is it. Uh, <laughs> I just created a 50 or yeah, close to 50. I will do a couple more off camera for a very special event. And if you commented below, um, I will reply back if you've been correct. And uh, here's the reveal. I'm getting married uh, very soon and uh, yeah, those are going to be tiny little gifts for our guests and I will put a tiny little label with a name for each and every guest and put it on his uh, place at the venue. Uh, so I guess that's a nice little souvenir for those who know me for what I do and I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, feel free to comment, to share and join the uh, membership program to support uh, the production of those videos. Thanks for watching guys, see you in the next one, peace.